Hey friends, tickets are now available for our new series of live workshops taking place in November and December. They're focused on getting coffee professionals and small business owners better prepared for 2023. There's one for coffee professionals, one for those looking to start or grow their business as a coffee consultant, and there's one for customer acquisition planning that's tailored to small business owners. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash events to grab tickets or check the show notes for details. Welcome back to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and Kira Kennedy and I are talking about leadership and success in today, in the coffee industry, in general, all of it. Um, we are in very interesting times, Kira. We are post, in inverted commas, pandemic. We are headed for interesting um, economic Uh, circumstances uh, sometime in the near future we are also smack bang in the middle of culture shifting uh, and transition with that comes the idea of looking back through generations and how they have formed what leadership represents today and What I'm hearing more and more, and I'm certainly hearing this from the younger people in the industry, is it seems like you guys broke everything with the way that you approach leadership. And I think that that's a really fascinating perspective to consider when we talk about leadership. Now, the idea of leadership is really being challenged right now in a very interesting way. The thing I've admired the most about you as a leader is that you don't shy away from difficult conversations, right? Mm-hmm. The, the thing that I am noticing more and more about leaders is as they are getting squeezed with all the challenging things that are going on in their, like all the things that we spoke about, whether it's inflation, whether it's economics, whether it's labor shortages, all these kinds of things. Their focus on what is important to lead with and the way that they have conversations. They either ignore what's going on or do they lean into it? And your style of leadership was really inspiring to me because you were like, no, things are Let's talk about it. Things are not going the way that we want them to go. People are unhappy. Uh, There's confusion. Let's talk about it. Do you think that that's something that is going to work for leaders now or do you think that it's something that people are going to just shy away from? Both, I think. (laughs) I think those conversations that you're talking about are very difficult conversations. And the reason they're difficult is because the, the, the employees that are, are quietly quitting Mm -hmm. or frustrated or don't feel seen or listened or whatever is um, going on for them. I don't know that they're very clear about exactly what they want, why they want it, where they're going, how it's going to work. And so it comes out as a frustration, um, maybe a specific frustration of, I don't want to come in the office, or I do want to come in the office, or we don't have enough events, or I'm not paid enough, or whatever. But I think there's more to the conversation mm. about um, what what are careers and what are work going to mean for people in the future? What I mean, many people say that uh, we have been working longer and longer hours with higher expectations of what people will do, um, not not appreciating them enough, not not giving them the training they need, not setting boundaries, not respecting them as human beings. I mean, there's lots of things going on. So I think what it's it's 
uncomfortable. It's another one of those uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. to dig in to say what actually is going on, both from from the owner of the company or the leader of the team or whoever that is, to have the conversation and explore it and how to make people comfortable to even talk about what's going on for them. Because we haven't been very good as companies to teach uh, our employees necessarily to talk and have conversations about the things that are important to them or the things they're frustrated with or even the things that they think could make us a better business. And so it takes a while. That's not going to happen just overnight when you say, I really want to hear, hear from you. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty scary to come out. It's easier to be quiet. It's easier to, to the great resignation. It's easier to leave the company. It's easier to just quietly uh, decide that you're not going to work as hard or you're you're not or you're going to um, leave a little early or and and I'm not I'm not saying not doing your job but maybe not doing the excess of the job right. that might be expected of you so going back to say hey I came to work and I was really passionate about what I was doing and I really cared about the company and it felt like every time I did that, you just put more on my plate and more on my plate and expected more. And um, you weren't listening to the boundaries that I had around that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to work, but I'm not going to do all the extra, all the passion, all the care that I was doing before. So what is the conversation to have around that mm. for leaders and managers to understand what's going on with, with their employees, how to improve their leadership and management, and also how to listen to what really is being asked for. Did you just know how to have those conversations as a leader? Did you, did you just know that this was important or was it a moment or did you go and get training or how did that work for you? Well, I, I'd say both. I, I did six years of leadership training yeah. and, um, and one of the things that um, Bob Dunham, who um, owned a company called Generative Leadership, used to talk about leadership as a performance art, that it wasn't oh, wow. something that you, you checked off the things of, I, I know how to read a profit and last statement, statement. Yeah. I know how to do this. I know how to run a meeting. It really was you're in there and you're having to perform because every time a tennis ball comes across, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to hit that specific one. And the big, big piece of that performance art was conversations. And how do you have conversations? especially conversations for actions. So conversations that you want to end up with somebody committing to follow through on something. And how do you have those conversations in a way that they understand exactly what the conditions of satisfaction are? Mm -hmm. And so uh, a leadership of that's designed around two people coming determining what the conditions of satisfaction, what the requirements are, what the dates are, all of that. Um, and so that was kind of the, the kingpin of, of management and leadership in this, in this program. And so I think having conversations when people would have a, would, would send an email or start a conversation that was very uncomfortable to be able to sit in that discomfort and figure out what the two of you had to get through in order to get to a condition of satisfaction for them to do the job and for me to accept that the job was well done. And how do you continue to have that conversation until you figure it out and both of you um, understand what the commitment is? 
I was recently in a, a meeting with a client and their investors and the investor, you could consider this person was a CEO of a company and the conversation that we were having was around the viability of the business and the intention of the business and he said something very interesting. Uh, we were talking about this cafe was still within the first year of its launching and he said, um, we don't focus on people, we focus on profits. For anyone who's just listening to this, you should go watch Curious Face and her response to that. <laughs> And I was really fascinated to observe everyone in the room's kind of response, their, their kind of physical response to him saying, we don't focus on people, we focus on profits. Because that feels like something that would have been said in the 80s, you know. Um, and I, I, I kind of challenged him on, on that perspective and he his response was if we don't have profits we don't have people so he's not wrong right and th and this is where the challenge comes in if we don't have profits we don't have people but if we don't have people we don't have profits yeah. well I think it's an interesting time when companies are really having a hard time finding mm -hmm. people and not only finding people that are skilled and talented that they want, but finding people at all. And I was just recently um, in, in a tourist town mm -hmm. and most of the restaurants weren't open because they couldn't find people. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was it's a great place to live a great place to visit and we called i mean one restaurant we called to get a reservation and the owner answered and said i'm embarrassed to say this but i can't open i don't have any people yeah and it ended up a conversation i had throughout the town of the frustration of how all these owners were working their tables and working everything and trying to ask their families to come in and work. And um, so, so people are going to become more important. I guess, I think you need both. And I think, I mean, obviously you need to have money to continue to have a business. And having an understanding of what it's going to be to be successful is is super important and i think a gift to to your employees i think we didn't do that enough abroad so we didn't talk enough about profits and revenues and it probably would have been helpful for everybody in our company to understand that more we really talked more about as i said the the three legs to the stool and how if all three of them were doing really well our profits would would do great. And we'd even say, oh, we're having some problems right now. And um, we're having a product problem and, and our revenues are suffering. And so we need to get this handled. And thanks to the support team for supporting them, but you really need to make sure that your products are reliable and they're working. And so I think it, it's been very interesting for me to work with Breville for the last year. Mm -hmm. And I think Baratza, uh, Breville cares about their people and they also care about profit. And I think it's been really great for me to be, to see the two cultures and how both of our cultures could be helped by maybe Bratza is more on the, the caring side of the culture and Rebel might be more on the results side of the culture and together they can come together and be better. And I don't think any company um, will be successful long-term if all they care about is the people 
And I don't think they'll be successful long term if yeah. all they care about is the profit. And so the importance is how do we join those together and help people realize that the company is better off if all of us are working together to take care of the customers and sell more product. Conspiring to each other's success. Right. (laughs) All right, everyone. We'll see you in the next episode. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Both have options for exclusive ad-free content and early release content. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.